Hola chicos, this is Ms. Schaefer. Today we'll be working on the vocabulario en contexto sección de capítulo 5B. Están páginas 248 y 249 si quieres verlo allá. In this chapter we're going to be working um, on describing people and talking about restaurants. So as you go through this, I want you to ask yourself, how can I describe the people around me? Um, and how can I use this for a restaurant? Vamos a empezar con una conversación aquí. We're going to go ahead and start with a conversation here. Dice, abuelito, ¿quiénes son las personas en la foto? So he's saying, you guys will remember, abuelito means grandfather. And when you add that ito to the end of it, that means like, um, like little or someone that you really care about. So that's what that ito means. So like, um, like dear grandfather kind of. ¿Quiénes son las personas en la foto? Who are the people in the picture? Y él responde, and he answers, La mujer es tu abuela y el hombre soy yo. So la mujer means the woman. And el hombre is a man. So he says, the woman is your grandmother and the man is me. Y aquí está tu papá. And here is your dad. Solo tiene seis años. He is only six years old. In these bottom two photos, we'll see some words that we can use to describe people. One of the things that we'll learn this chapter is that in Spanish, there are two different words for the verb to be, like is, are. You guys have learned them both, ser and estar. But that's going to be our major focus of this chapter. And all of these words along the bottom, you would use the verb ser to describe these people. Let's go ahead and write these down on our list of new vocab. Alto means tall. And baja or bajo means short. Remember that these will need to agree, like all adjectives have to agree. So that's why alto ends in O and baja ends in short. Um, so baja, baja ends in A. Um, but you'll have to do that depending on who it is. El pelo castaño. El pelo is hair. And castaño means brown or chestnut. So el pelo castaño is brown or chestnut hair. But you can use pelo to describe lots of different kinds. El pelo rubio, in the same way, is blonde hair. El pelo corto is short hair. And what you'll notice here is that corto is short, like length. And um, baja, like we saw over, sorry, let's get that off of there. Baja, like we saw um, over here in this other picture, means short, like stature, like a person is short. Pelirroja means redheaded. Or red haired. El pelo largo is long hair. And el pelo negro is black hair. Make sure you have these, please, before you go ahead and flip to the next page with us. Here you can see the boy and his grandfather talking. We have a couple more words here that we'll look at. Joven means young, while viejo means old. And then pelo canoso is gray hair. You'll notice that whether it's a man or a woman that you're talking about, this color is describing pelo, so it will always be in the masculine form. So the boy asks, ¿Quién es el joven alto y guapo? Who is an el joven? We said how joven means young. El joven is the noun, so the young person. So who's the young person that's tall and guapo means handsome or good looking? Let's go ahead and put good looking on there too because really you can use it for a boy or a girl. So have both of those there. And the boy asks, <laughs> oh, the grandfather answers, it's your cousin, Rafael. And the boy asks, ¿Y la joven baja al lado del primo Rafael? La joven would be the young woman. 
So, and the, the short young woman next to um, the cousin Raphael? And he answers, that's your friend Sara. And there are other people, and the other people, these other people, are friends as well. Otras, others. Y estas otras personas son amigos también. Notice that otras rhymes with person, uh, uh, has an adjective agreement with personas. The other thing that the other thing that we're going to talk about in this chapter is restaurant vocabulary. This will be something that will be very useful to you guys because one place that you definitely can use your Spanish is when you go out to eat, whether that's in a Mexican restaurant um, here or a country abroad. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and match up some of these words, and they should be put on your list, please. So, la camarera is a waitress, and over here we'll see el camarero is a waiter, the male and female versions, of course. El menú is a cognate, oh, you can guess that's menu, make sure you have that accent on menú. La cuenta is the bill. El azúcar is sugar. Uh, la sal is salt, and la pimienta is pepper. Moving on to the place setting, el tenedor is a fork, la servilleta is a napkin, el cuchillo is a knife, la cuchara is a spoon, la taza is a cup, El vaso is a glass, and el plato is a plate. Please make sure you have these words written down before you move on to the next slide. On this final slide, this, um, this, these grandparents and their grandson are talking again, and he asks, Abuela, ¿qué celebramos esta noche? Grandma, what did we celebrate this night? And the grandma answers, the, the birthday of your grandfather. Es el cumpleaños de tu abuelo. Y él pregunta, ¿Quiénes vienen a la fiesta? Who comes to the party? Y la abuela responde, toda la familia viene. All of the family comes. Now both vienen and viene are from the verb venir, which means to come. It's a I, uh, E to I, E stem changer. So that's one of the other grammar points that we will be working on this chapter. But please make sure that you have the verb venir written down on your sheet. Your final activity here is to go ahead and draw and label a table setting. Remember our two questions while watching this video were how can I describe people, which we're going to work on a lot in class this unit, and then how can I talk about restaurants. So we're going to end today by going ahead and working on that table setting. You can use the slide a couple ago if you rewind to, to cheat and help you remember what needs to be there. And as always, if you have any questions, please go ahead and write those down at the bottom of your paper so that you can remember to ask them in class. Gracias y adiós.